Good day dear children today let's continue with the lesson enemy of your vistas textbook part 3 In this lesson you find Dr Sadao and his wife Hana while standing outside their house find a man who suddenly appears out of the ocean they run towards him and to their shock they find that he was an american prisoner of war who was badly wounded and had become unconscious Sadao is torn between his duty as a doctor and his loyalty towards Japan as citizens having a sense of national loyalty they felt it their duty to put the man back into the sea however soon they rose above narrow prejudices and brought the man into their house even though they faced open defiance or resistance from their domestic help they are able to look after the man sadao being a doctor performs the operation on the american prisoner and hana helped him with washing the person and also giving him anesthetic that is where we have stopped in the last class we will continue she crouched close to the sleeping face of the young american It was a piteously thin face she thought and the lips were twisted the man was suffering whether he knew it or not watching him she wondered if the stories they heard sometimes of the sufferings of prisoners were true they came like flickers of rumor told by word of mouth and always contradicted here you find hana is closely watching the american prisoner's face she finds that it was a pitiable face a thin face and she thought or she wondered whether this man also had to suffer because she has heard a lot of stories regarding the hardships that the prisoners had to face and these stories usually appeared suddenly lasted only for a moment and then disappeared and those were those stories were all opposed whenever it came by now let's continue In the newspapers the reports were always that wherever the Japanese armies went the people received them gladly with cries of joy at their liberation but sometimes she remembered such men as general Takima who at home beat his wife cruelly though no one mentioned it now that he had fought so victorious a battle in Manchuria if a man like that could be so cruel to a woman in his power would he not be cruel to one like this for instance general takima is a famed japanese war hero while observing tom's peculiar wounds which indicate that he has endured some type of torture at the hands of the japanese hana reflects on how general beat his wife cruelly in the privacy of their own house although hana desperately wants to believe that tom hasn't tom or the american prisoner hasn't been tortured she knows that he has been this makes her seriously doubt the media's claims that wherever the japanese armies went the people received them gladly this moment of doubt is fairly fleeting for her though her reflection in relation to the rest of the narrative suggests that the moment is a significant one for her she hoped anxiously that this young man had not been tortured It was at this moment that she observed deep red scars on his neck just under the ear. Those scars, she murmured, lifting her eyes to Sadao, but he did not answer. So underline that point, deep red scars on the prisoner's neck just under the ear. At this moment he felt Dr. Sadao felt the tip of his instrument strike against something hard, dangerously near the kidney. all thought left him he felt only the purest pleasure he probed with his fingers delicately familiar with every atom of this human body his old american professor of anatomy had seen to that knowledge ignorance of the human body is the surgeon's cardinal sin sirs he had thundered at his classes year after year to operate without as complete knowledge of the body as if you had made it anything less than that is murder it is not quite at the kidney my friend sadao murmured it was his habit to murmur to the patient when he forgot himself in an operation 
my friend he always called his patients and so now he did forgetting that this was his enemy here you find dr sadao is completely involved in his work and he is a dedicated doctor he remembers how the anatomy professor had taught him how to approach a human body while performing a surgery he even addresses this prisoner as his friend even though he was his enemy because he was so used to calling his patients friend while performing the operation then quickly with the cleanest and most precise of incisions the bullet was out the man quivered trembled but he was still unconscious nevertheless he muttered a few english words guts he muttered choking they got my guts sadao hana cried sharply hush sadao said the man sank again into silence so profound so deep that sadao took up his wrist hating the touch of it yes there was still a pulse so faint so feeble but enough if he wanted the man to live to give hope but certainly i do not want this man to live he thought no more anesthetic he told hana he turned as swiftly as though he had never paused and from his medicines he chose a small vial that's a bottle and from it filled a hypodermic that's an injection given under the skin and thrust it into the patient's left arm then putting down the needle he took the man's wrist again the pulse under his fingers fluttered once or twice and then grew stronger this man will live in spite of all he said to hana and sighed the young man woke so weak his blue eyes so terrified when he perceived when he observed where he was that hana felt compelled to apologize she herself served him underlined that point for none of the servants would enter the room when she came in the first time she saw him summon gather his small strength to be prepared for some fearful thing don't be afraid she begged him softly how come you speak english he gasped i was a long time in america she replied she saw that he wanted to reply to that but he could not and so she knelt and fed him gently underline from the porcelain spoon he ate unwillingly but still he ate now you will be strong soon she said not liking him and yet moved to comfort him so you find hana feeding the young american and also comforting him he did not answer when sadao came in the third day after the operation he found the young man sitting up his face bloodless with the effort lie down sadao cried do you want to die he forced the man down gently and strongly and examined the wound you may kill yourself if you do this sort of thing he scolded what are you going to do with me the boy muttered he looked just now barely 17 underlined 17 are you going to hand me over and now by this time the prisoner came to know that uh, he had come into a japanese house and they were enemies and he is now a, a little bit tense to regarding what these people are going to do with him for a moment sadao did not answer he finished his examination and then pulled the silk quilt over the man i do not know myself what i shall do with you he said i ought of course to give you to the police you are a prisoner of war no do not tell me anything he put up his hand as he saw the young man was about to speak do not even tell me your name unless i ask it they looked at each other for a moment and then the young man closed his eyes and turned his face to the wall okay he whispered his mouth a bitter line outside the door hana was waiting for sadao he saw at once that she was in trouble underline let's see what trouble was she in now sadao you may tells me the servants feel they cannot stay if we hide this man here any more she said she tells me that they are saying that you and i were so long in america that we have forgotten to think of our own country first they think we like americans it is not true said sadao harshly americans are our enemies 
but I have been trained to not let a man die if I can help it. The servants cannot understand that, she said anxiously. No, he agreed. Neither seemed able to move or say more and somehow the household dragged on. The servants grew more watchful, underlined, that's an important point, the reaction of the servants. They grew more watchful. Their courtesy was as careful as ever, but their eyes were cold upon the pair to whom they were hired. Underline those points, reaction of the servants. It is clear what our master ought to do, the old gardener said one morning. He had worked with flowers all his life and had been a specialist too in moss. For Sadao's father, he had made one of the finest moss gardens in Japan, sweeping the bright green carpet constantly that not a leaf or a pine needle marred, destroyed the velvet of its surface. Underline, my old master's son knows very well what he ought to do, he now said, pinching a bud from a bush as he spoke. When the man was so near death, why did he not let him bleed? That young master is so proud of his skill to save life that he saves any life, the cook said contemptuously, hatefully. She split a fowl's neck skillfully and held the fluttering bird and let its blood flow into the roots of a wisteria vine, that's a climbing plant. Blood is the best of fertilizers and the old gardener would not let her waste a drop of it. It is the children of whom we must think, Yumi said sadly. What will be the fate if your father is condemned as a traitor? So here you find, though all the servants are involved in their day-to-day -day works, they are discussing about the American prisoner at home and they are totally upset regarding the fact. They did not try to hide what they said from the ears of Hannah as she stood arranging the day's flowers in the veranda nearby and she knew they spoke on purpose that she might hear that they were right she knew too in most of her being but there was another part of her which she herself could not understand it was not sentimental liking of the prisoner she had come to think of him as a prisoner she had not liked him even yesterday when he had said in his impulsive way anyway let me tell you that my name is tom she had only bowed her little distant bow. She saw hurt in his eyes, but she did not wish to assuage it, to calm down it. Indeed, he was a great trouble in this house. As for Sadao, every day he examined the wound carefully. The last stitches had been pulled out this morning and the young man would, in a fortnight, be nearly as well as ever. Sadao went back to his office and carefully typed a letter to the chief of police reporting the whole matter underlined that point he wanted to actually inform the superiors regarding the presence of an enemy soldier on the 21st day of february an escaped prisoner was washed upon the shore in front of my house so far he typed and then he opened a secret drawer of his desk and put the unfinished report into it so here you find again Sadao is trying to write a report but he is not able to finish the report. On the seventh day after that, two things happened. Underlined that particular sentence, there's a question. What are the two things that happened on the seventh day? In the morning, the servants left together. Underlined, that's the first point. Their belongings tied in large square cotton kerchiefs. When Hannah got up in the morning, nothing was done. The house not cleaned and the food not prepared and she knew what it meant. She was dismayed and even terrified but her pride as a mistress would not allow her to show it. Instead, she inclined her head gracefully when they appeared before her in the kitchen and she paid them off and thanked them for all that they had done for her. They were crying but she did not cry. The cook and the gardener had served Sadao since he was a little boy in his father's house and Yumi cried because of the children. She was so grieving that after she had gone, she ran back to Hannah. If the baby misses me too much tonight, send for me. 
I am going to my own house and you know where it is. Thank you, Hannah said smiling. But she told herself she would not send for Yumi. However, the baby cried. She made the breakfast and said how helped with the children. Neither of them spoke of the servants beyond the fact that they were gone. But after Hannah had taken morning food to the prisoner, she came back to Sadao. Why is it we cannot see clearly what we ought to do? She asked him. Even the servants see more clearly than we do. Why are we different from other Japanese? So here Hannah is facing a difficult situation. All the servants had left and she is quite surprised at the fact why they are not able to understand and see clearly what the servants were able to. Sadao did not answer. But a little later he went to the room where the prisoner was and said brusquely, rudely, Today you may get up on your feet. I want you to stay up only five minutes at a time. Tomorrow you may try it twice as long. It would be well that you get back your strength as quickly as possible. Here you find Dr. Sadao is a bit rude to the prisoner. He wants him to practice daily and get back to his feet as early as possible. Somehow he wants to get rid of this trouble from his house and get things back to normalcy. He saw the flicker of terror on the young face that was still very pale. Okay, the boy murmured. Evidently, he was determined to say more. I feel I ought to thank you, doctor, for having saved my life. Don't thank me too early, Sadao said coldly. He saw the flicker of terror again in the boy's eyes. Terror as unmistakable as an animal's. The scars on his neck were crimson, dark red for a moment. Those scars, what were they? Sadao did not ask. So you find Tom is trying to tell something more to Sadao, but Sadao is not interested to get to know more about this prisoner. Thus we come to the end of part 3. Thank you.